are getting ready to start the westward expansion movement and as you can tell it's probably one of my favorite ones um, we've done a couple of things we've looked at this picture for manifest destiny and you guys made some great observations about what was going on and if you can see in this picture you can see it's a light over here and it's moving into the darkness and that kind of represents going into uncharted territories but if you also look really close you can see all the technology and the things that are coming into the new land but the Native Americans and the buffalo are getting run off of the new land. So there were some good points and some bad points about this um, westward expansion. And we're going to go over a couple of things today and we'll go over some more this week. The first thing that we want to do is examine the reasons for westward expansion, including its impact on Native Americans. Today, we're just going to talk a little bit about westward expansion. Um, most of the time at the early days in westward expansion, everybody had to load up the wagons and head out west. Eventually, railroads would come in and wagon trains and um the Wells Fargo Express to make it a little bit easier and as the trails got more worn down and found better routes it was an easy journey at first it was very very difficult and very unsafe let's talk about the expansion of the United States for just a second in the expansion of the United States you'll see that Originally, um, these were the 13 original colonies that became states um, that we fought the British in the American Revolution over. After we won the American Revolution, this area east of the Mississippi was given to the United States. So this area expanded. And the Ohio River was the first gateway to the West because the Ohio River, most people travel by barge or by boat, and they were able to get down the Ohio River. In 1803, Thomas Jefferson purchased the Louisiana Territory, um, which doubled the size of the United States. And in 1819, um, Spain ceded as Florida through the Adams Onus Treaty. Eventually, we would fight Oregon, um, or I'm sorry, Great Britain to get the Oregon Territory. And if you notice, the only straight line that we have on our borders is that line um, on the latitude line that divides us from Canada. We would then fight a war with Mexico. Um, and get the Mexican cession and also the Texas annexation. Um, Gadsden, who was our interior secretary at the time, purchased this land so that the railroad, the transcontinental railroad, could also go north and south, but we didn't use this land, so eventually it would be claimed by Arizona and New Mexico. And that's how the U.S. expanded. This is one of the reasons that we had all this territory, so why not put it to good use? So the westward expansion pretty much followed the end of the Civil War. Settlers left because a lot of the South had been devastated, and a lot of them just wanted a new start. So they expanded into the western territories. Why move west? Well, remember the acronym LARGE, L-A-R-G-E, land. It was cheap and fertile land that was available um, at Venture. There were new opportunities and new, not necessarily jobs like we think them, but more opportunities for them to cattle ranch or farm. Railroads made transportation faster, cheaper, and easier. And along with that, knowledge of overland trails. As more and more people traveled, they began to get on the trails worn out, kind of like our roads today, and they became known as the Oregon and Santa Fe Trail. The Oregon Trail went north to Oregon. The Santa Fe went south to New Mexico. 
And also there was a gold rush and a silver strike at this time. So gold was one of the reasons. And then you have a new term called exodusters. And exodusters were former slaves who moved on to the prairie to start a new life and to start their own homesteads and farms. They were called exodusters because they had an exodus through the Great Migration, and we'll get to that in a minute. All of this was a belief in the manifest destiny, the idea that expansion was good and right for the country. So let's go back to land. As more and more immigrants came in from Europe, of course, Europe, you have to cross the Atlantic Ocean, so you come to the eastern side of the U.S. first. There was overcrowding in the cities, and land was in short supply. The land in the east, most people had already claimed it, so there weren't that many opportunities for housing and um, places to start your family. As you can see, all these big buildings grew up, but they were very tightly packed. So people wanting land and farms wanted to spread out a little bit. Many Americans had to rebuild their lives after the Civil War, so they responded to the incentive of free public land and moved west. Land became cheap and available through the Homestead Act of 1862, so it actually started the year after the Civil War. President Lincoln enacted the Homestead Act, and this was where government gave away 160 acres to men who were over 21, widows or heads of families um, if they paid a small fee they could farm the land for five years and it became theirs the problem with this was the u.s government had claimed the native american lands and the native americans were not real happy about that adventure the years immediately before and after the civil war were the era of the american cowboy yippee they marked long cattle drives for hundreds of miles over unfenced open land in the West. The only way to get cattle to market. Cowboys worked hard, but they were seen as heroes by people in the East. Um, you guys don't get to see many cowboy movies, but when I grew up, cowboys were, you know, somebody you looked up with. We had John Wayne and people like that, and it just made kind of your heroes. And no, before you even say it, I was not born in the Civil War era. But I might be old, but I'm not that old. Just kidding. Okay. Railroads. Railroads were faster transportation across the nation. They were easier to move goods. And I'm sorry, my pictures are all wonky here. Let me fix this real quick. Sorry. It was easier to go move goods from the west to the east and vice versa. Wagon trains were not really trains, but they were wagons that went overland on either the Oregon or Santa Fe Trail. The trails started in Independence, Missouri and headed out, and then eventually they would break off around Fort Laramie, and one would go north, which was the Oregon Trail, and one would go south to the Santa Fe Trail. I put this on there because I thought you might like to see it, but this Oregon Trail was a game that came out probably in the late 80s, early 90s, and it was one of the first video games I think I ever played. Um, and I always lost because somehow I always got dysentery. And if you've ever played it, there is a site um, where you can go play the game. So if you want to Google that, it might be something fun for you guys to do. The G in large is gold rush. And there was a gold rush or gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill in 1848. Eight. There was also a silver strike that was discovered or one of the largest silver mines in Nevada and it was called the Comstock Lode and it was a huge mine of silver deposits. Gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill in 1848 and gold comes pretty much through creek beds. They go through and they find they pan for it and they have to pan through all the silt in the creek bed and all the rocks to just find little pieces. But because there were so many people that rushed to California to see if they could make an easy fortune, 
they were called 49ers because they they went in the year 1849. The prospectors didn't really get rich. Very few of them actually struck it big with gold. Who struck it the biggest was the merchants. And I put this link in here, and I hope it works for you. Um, but anyway, it was the um, California Govern National Park Survey that had put what the prices were for um, for prospectors. And like a pan that they panned gold, you can see the pan right here. Um, it started out being just a couple of cents and then it went to like eight dollars so a lot of these people actually went broke trying to find their fortune in gold it's kind of like people today that buy lottery tickets you spend all that money for lottery tickets and most people don't win the one thing that I wanted you the little trivia here was that Levi Strauss created blue jeans from this the miners were wearing um, more cloth pants and they were wearing out really quick so Levi Strauss found um, a niche and he created a denim material that held up a little bit stronger and he put rivets in the seams so that the seams would not come apart and they really caught on and of course you can buy Levi's still today Southerners and African Americans in particular moved west to seek opportunities after the Civil War. You had African Americans who were being discriminated in the South, so they were trying to go somewhere where they didn't have to put up with that. So a lot of them went um, either to the North or to the West. And then you had the Southerners who had come back from the war and their homes had been destroyed. They couldn't find jobs, so they were also seeking opportunities. The former slaves that moved into Kansas were called exodusters, and they got this because in 1879, after the Reconstruction, and when the Jim Crow laws really got going um, and were really discriminatory, there was a great migration of African Americans from the South to the North and to the West. Um, and just like they said, the exodus in the Bible of the Jewish people um, into the desert. This was kind of like what the um, African Americans were going, only they were going into the prairie. Um, they were trying to make a new life on the prairie for farming. And as you look, this is a Freedman's Bureau that it was established on the prairie by a Quaker who was an abolitionist um, during the wartime and up until the civil, up until the amendments came in. So he had all these people that he was helping out. And then here's a wagon train of exodusters that's getting ready to start. And then these were some of the people who actually built their home on the prairie. The one thing to remember from this unit is large. The key things that people moved west for were land, adventure, railroad, gold, and exodusters. And we're going to stop here today, and I'll put part two in at a later time.